Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went into the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that way. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right, uh, the, 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 I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time! I don't know because he never told us! Ugh. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man! At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out under the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest the real scene of this crime was not in a boat? What? Well, well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. The murder took place... Let me just look. Took place here. Take that! Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing him. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned uh, had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond! Then, he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edward. On purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. 
I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and then threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Silence. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What White has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I, I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him, quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that bow shop caretaker? Bow shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Whew! That was close. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with this testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Ugh. D did you say something? Don't look so pain. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile. Just a little. Relax. Ugh. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth. No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A, a crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Oh, fuck! Stay tuned for the third day of investigation! See ya!